In this video, we're going to create a stylized shield. We're going to use a bit different approach than in the other videos I made, mainly to show you how to create a more complex object. I know a shield is not super complex, but if you understand the way for this, you can easily create more complex stuff by yourself. Okay, now let's first start by deleting the default cube and then creating a new cylinder. Um, we're going to choose uh, for the new cylinder vertices of 12. So that's going to be our wooden part. Now in edit mode, you can scale it on the set axis a bit flatter. So it's about the height that you want it to be. And um, next we're going to use the knife tool. So with K, you can create new edges. Um, this is going to be the limits between our wooden planks. So I'm just going to create three of them on each side. And um, of course, on the other side, you want to have the same direction. So the next thing we want to do is separate those so that we have four single planks. Um, we're going to do so by going into face selection mode and then select one of those loops and then press Y to separate them. Um, again, we're going to do that for another one and then we have four separate kind of parts of the mesh. So now if you're hovering with your mouse over one part and pressing L, you're selecting exactly that one part. And then with shift H, you can hide the other ones and then create faces in between um, kind of the areas that are now still open. So just select one of the edges and then press F and then you have a face on each side of that plank. And we're just going to repeat that until we have four planks and each of them are enclosed from each side of the faces. Now it's still one object, so we're still in edit mode in that one object, but we still have those four different parts and we can work on them separately. Okay, next we wanna give the planks a little bit more detail. So what I'm gonna do is gonna use the knife tool again, and with the outer plank, it's just gonna create um, three more edges that are kind of in the middle. It doesn't have to be really precise. And now with selecting the outer one and in top view, you can just grab it and move it a little bit. Um, same for the outer ones. Uh, here it's also really nice if you um, unhide the rest of the mesh so you can see what is happening. So what we're trying to do is actually just getting some space between those planks. Just a little bit, but just so you can see that it's actually we have four planks. For the two middle planks we can create each a loop cut and then just move it a little bit along. And maybe scale it so we're getting a little bit different heights. And then for the other outer one, I'm going to repeat like the first one. So I'm going to use the knife tool and create three edges going around the plank and then moving it a little bit around just to give it also some variation. And the last thing we can do is pull apart the end parts of the planks just a little bit. So we have also there some space in between. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab one of the edges there. Um, in the beginning like on top of each other, but it doesn't matter which one so you can just click on one and then just move it on the X and Y axis so what you can do is press G and then shift Z so you're just moving it along X and Y and then just move it away from the other one just a bit. Now the last thing I want to do is grab the outer edges so you can select them by Alt and Shift and then just select the top and the bottom ones and then uh, scale them on the set axis. So just pull them a bit together so they're closer to each other and it's giving it a bit more rounded shape. Okay, with this, um, the wooden part is ready and we can work on the metal outer ring that is surrounding the wooden planks. So what we're gonna do is just go in um, object mode and then create a new cylinder. For this new cylinder, I'm gonna use um, 32 vertices so it's much more rounder on the outside. And then in wireframe mode, I'm just going to scale it a bit up um, just so I have a nice corner around the wooden planks. Now, if we switch into side view, we can see the height. So from the height, we just want to have it a little bit higher than the wooden planks. So it's really enclosing the planks and then maybe move it a little bit around. So it's um, the wooden planks are in the middle of the metal ring. Next, I want to create from the cylinder an actual ring. So I'm going to go in face mode and then also in solid view and selecting the top and the bottom face. And then we're going to do it inside. We're just getting a small border. Um, just accept that one and then do another inside where you're changing um, the depth and leave this thickness to zero. 
Okay, now we're gonna do one last insert, and for this one, we're gonna go into wireframe again and in top view. So now when we're doing an insert, we can see um, when it's surrounding the planks nicely. And what I also realized is that um, my metal ring is a bit too big, so I'm just gonna scale it a bit more down so it's nicely enclosing the wooden planks and it's not too big. Select one more time the top and the bottom face and then search for bridge edge loops. And then just press enter and you have a nice ring surrounding them wooden planks. If you want, you can now still scale the inner ring um, just to give the metal ring, just getting it a bit more wider, um, just see what looks good. And then we're gonna create another cylinder. So we're gonna stay in edit mode, press shift A and create a new cylinder. Reduce the vertices to 16 and then scale the whole cylinder down. Um, this is going to be the middle metal part. So we wanna scale it down so it's nicely in the middle and then also um, change the height. So for the bottom part, delete the bottom face because we won't need that. That's gonna be hidden anyway in the wood. And then um, just move the whole cylinder bit up so you just see it on top of the shield. Now in wireframe mode, you can select a bottom ring and then move that one up so it's just barely in the woods. But we don't wanna waste any faces that are halfway hidden through other ones. Back in the solid view, we can now grab the top face and move it down, so with G and then Z, so just that it's barely above the woods. And now we're gonna do something similar like with the outer ring, but instead of using inset, this time I'm gonna use extrude and just abort it and then using scale to pull the whole thing inward. Now again, we can extrude it, but this time downwards, so we get a nice little border around the metal ring and then extrude one more time and then scale it inwards. So we have this kind of um, nice shape. So one more time extruding upward and then adding some loop cuts and then select a the top face and enable proportional editing. Now, when we scale the top face and proportional editing is um, enabled, it is also affecting the other faces surrounding it. And you can always change the degree of how many of the other faces are affected by using your mouse wheel. So that circle around my mouse currently is um, the radius which faces are actually getting affected by this operation. So um, I think that looks good, but I do have a lot of edges that I don't need and I'm actually not even sure where they came from. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select every second one of them and then um, press X and dissolve them. So they're kind of just vanishing into nothing. And uh, that just leaves me with a bit more rougher kind of round shape, but that's completely fine here. Okay, so with this is done, um, we can add a few more edges at the top just to get rid of that end gun. So here you're just gonna use the knife tool again, creating a few more edges and then this is done. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into object mode and then create an icosphere. Um, when you're creating that icosphere, make sure to change the subdivision first. So I had to create it new again to get those settings at the bottom left and then change the subdivisions to one. Then change to face selection mode and wireframe and select all the bottom faces and delete those one. So we're kind of just left over with that little pyramid or I don't know how to call that shape actually. Now that shape we have, we can now scale in edit mode, um, quite small. So this is gonna be those little metal parts that um, like bolts or something that connect the metal ring and the wooden planks. And after we want to position those ones um, directly on top of another face, we can turn on snapping and change the snapping um, mode to faces. So now if we pull that little object down it's going to be positioned directly on top of the other ones and we don't have to worry too much about the correct positioning so now we can just duplicate it and then position it around the metal ring i'm gonna use um i'm, I'm not trying to do a perfect positioning so i'm i'm actually going for some asymmetric style and then also positioning a few smaller ones um in the middle metal ring 
Our shield is now nearly ready and the only thing we need now is a handle. So I created that in another project and what I did is I started with a curve. Curves are really great for organic shapes and they're actually really easy to handle so don't be afraid or something. Um, first I'm going to rotate it on the x-axis 90 degrees so it's kind of standing upward. And then I'm going to create a new cube. So in object mode just press shift A and then create a new cube. Now tap into edit mode and go into edge selection mode. And when you press shift and alt and click on one of those outer edges you're selecting all of them surrounding them. And here we can do now a bevel. So just with control B we can bevel out the edges. And in the bottom menu on the left we can define the segment. So I'm choosing two segments um, just to give it a little bit rounder look than before. In wireframe and face selection mode select all the back faces and delete them one, those ones so you only have the front face left. And then select the front face and here delete only face so the edges are actually staying. Now let's go back into object mode and then select the curve. Um, we want the kind of square thing we created as the geometry um, from the curve. But if we try to select it as the object, um, we can't do that because currently it's still an object and we need a curve here. So we can select the square thing again and then convert it to a curve and then select the previous curve again and now we can select um, this as the bevel object. Now we only need to rotate it around the x-axis for 90 degrees and then apply the rotation. If you now scale that square thingy um, it's adjusting the other curve automatically and we can scale it a bit um, just making it smaller and then scaling it on the y-axis also so we get it a little bit more wider and then just you know scale it until you have about the right size that you want to go for. It doesn't matter where you place that basic object so you can just move it aside and then work with the actual curve that is representing our handle. Now to edit the curve I removed the bevel object just for now again so I can easier work on the curve. Um, in edit mode you have those kind of red handles that you can just move around with G just with a normal object and you can adjust the, the effect that it's having on the other parts of the curve. So I think that's mainly just trying out and um, what you can also do is you can extrude. So just grabbing one middle part of that curve and then pressing E to extrude it and just creating a longer um, curve part and then you just have to move them around until you get the right shape. Um, you can use a mirror modifier here, I'm just going to go with a unique look and trying to create um, just by itself and then just extruding it to the right size I want it to be. Okay, we got the main shape, so back into object mode, I gonna add the bevel object again, just to see how it looks. And um, now obviously it's kind of a bit blowing up, so we can scale the bevel object, so just take the other one and then scale it down until it has the right size. And then maybe also scale it again on the y axis, getting it a bit more wider, and uh, just trying out a bit. And um, what I also gonna do, because there's some really hard um, corners at the bottom, so back into edit mode I'm gonna adjust that so it's all kind of more flowing. And what I also did is move the outer parts a bit more apart by just scaling them on the x-axis. Um, here you just, you know, just move them around until you have a good look and um, it looks like a handle. So um, when you're finished go into object mode and then duplicate the curve. The duplicate curve is just going to be a backup so we can hide it for now and you can use it later or don't use it at all. Um, the first one we're now going to convert to a mesh. So now when we edit mode we can see a complete normal mesh but we cannot adjust it um, like we did before with the curve. So this is now a complete mesh and we can only edit it like um, all the other normal meshes we have. This mesh currently has quite a lot of faces that we actually don't need. I thought about using a modifier to do some, but in the end I just thought, okay, I'm just going to select a few of the edges that we don't need. Um, so you can select them all with Alt and so holding Shift and then dissolving them as we did with Shield. And then you can also get 
um, reducing the faces and get a more basic shape. And then just keep reducing those edges until you have a more basic shape. Um, also reduce them on the side. Um, just remember it's a really small object so even though if you're switching to object mode you think oh that looks a bit edgy, doesn't matter because it's going to be small and um, no one's going to see it that detailed. After I created this handle in a different Blender file, I'm now going to go in object mode and copy it with Control c and then in the original file with the shield i'm gonna paste it in with Control v now we can take the handle and scale it to the right size and then also move it um, so it's um, good standing on those planks we created earlier and just adjust it until it looks good next select the icosphere object so those small bolts we have and in edit mode Duplicate one of them and rotate it around um, X or Y axis on 180 degrees. So we can um, position it on the other side of the shield. For the positioning, I'm also going to turn on snapping again so we can place it easier. And then it's just a matter of um, going into the back view and then just um, placing it right. Maybe also scaling it a bit more so it, it looks um, like it should be. And of course also duplicate it so we have one on each side of the handle. With this done we can turn off snapping again and our shield is basically finished. Um, when there are a few things we can do now to actually make our life easier later for sculpting. So one of these things is that we um, separate those planks so we have actually four different objects. Therefore, I'm first going to go ahead and rename the objects so I can keep them better apart. So I'm going to call them wood, metal and handle. Now select the wood object and switch into edit mode. Here select one of those islands with L and then press P to separate it. Um, repeat that one for three of the other ones so you have in total four wood objects. And the only thing now left to do is to reduce all the hidden faces. So hidden faces are faces that no matter from what angle you're looking at the object you won't see them and um, for the wooden planks we have all the outer faces that are actually hidden so you can go into edit mode and then remove those faces after we have now separate objects we can select all the three objects or four um, after each other and then we can edit them all together and remove all the faces around them We've now finished up the basic mesh of our shield, so next we can work on the sculpting, the UE editing and the baking. And for the baking I'm also going to show you how to bake from different separate objects into one texture map and then combine it all later on back to one object again. 